Hello, and welcome to another video from 35 Archive. Today, we're going to be doing our 51st D&D 3.5 Prestige Class Review, and we're going to be looking at the Bear Warrior from the Complete Warrior Sourcebook. Bear Warriors hail from far-off barbarian tribes that worship various totem animals, in this case the bear. Uh, bear Warriors uh, worship these spirits and get close enough with them that they eventually are able to adapt the strength of the bear and shapeshift into one. Um, and so to be a bear warrior, you're going to need a plus seven base attack bonus, the power attack feat, and a rage or frenzy ability. So this is clearly geared toward barbarians. You're going to need to have at least one level in barbarian to take levels in this prestige class. As for how many you should have, that's really up to you. You are going to be missing out on a lot of the good later features of the Barbarian class anyway, so multi-classing in Fighter to get into this Prestige class isn't a bad idea. It might be a good idea to at least get to level 4 in Barbarian, so that you can get your second Rage per day. Uh, if you go all the way to 7 levels in Barbarian, then you're just one more Barbarian level away from getting an extra Rage per day, which is going to help because those Rages are going to fuel your uh, Bear shapeshifting ability. I would rate the requirements for this prestige class as not at all restrictive. You would be hard pressed to find a barbarian that does not have the power attack feat, so pretty much every barbarian is going to qualify for this prestige class eventually. This is great because this means if you discover this prestige class later on, or you're not sure where to go with your character, uh, this is sitting here ready to go. Of course there may be some roleplay requirements for you to discover this uh, you know, totem. Hopefully your dungeon master doesn't require you to take the totem barbarian alternate class feature uh, and to choose the bear totem, because ironically you are much better off choosing the lion totem. Uh, of course this is because it gives you pounce, which is going to be great because as a bear you're going to have multiple natural attacks that you're going to want to be able to use on your foes while you're the same turn you're moving into melee with them. Um, so while that might be a little bit strange of a build, that might be a bit of a flavor issue for some people, that will be your best bet. Probably four levels of Barbarian to get uh, two Rages a day, and then, you know, two or three levels of Fighter uh, in order to get some bonus feats, and then you will be all set to enter into the Bear Warrior Prestige class. So what do you get from being a Bear Warrior? Well, you get a D12 hit die, and you're going to get full base attack bonus, as you would expect. You're also going to get a good fortitude save, so this is pretty much the same as a Barbarian. So you're going to continue advancing. You're also going to get a few class features. At level 1, you're going to gain the ability to transform into a bear while in a rage, rage or frenzy. Uh, you're still going to get your plus 2 bonus and will saves and minus 2 penalty to armor class, but your ability score bonuses are going to be replaced by... Uh, gaining a bear's strength, dexterity, and constitution modifiers. Now, while the uh, rules text here is a bit unclear, as it says you can do this uh, anytime you enter a rage, you can pick one of your your bear forms and enter it. Uh, it does try to limit it later by saying you can at first assume the form of a black bear once per day, then a brown bear twice per day, and so on. Um, this has later been errated so that you do not have to worry about that. You simply have as many uses of your bear form as you do of your rage, which is why you're going to want to take probably seven levels of barbarian unless you really want some fighter bonus feats, because it's going to give you access to more uses of your uh, bear form by giving you more rage uses. You probably will want eight levels in barbarian eventually. That will give you three rages per day, plus one rage that you will get from your seventh level in this prestige class. That'll give you four rages per day, which is going to be one for every combat you're expected to be in a standard, you know, adventuring day, so to speak. That said, a lot of parties don't follow this rule, and a lot of times you're going to only have one or two fights per day, so you have to judge that for yourself based off of the expectations you have from your campaign. So when you are taking your Black Bear form, you get a plus eight bonus to strength, plus two to dexterity, and plus four to constitution. So this is just a flat-out superior version of the Rage bonuses. Um, at level 5, you're going to be able to assume a Brown Bear form, which gives you a plus 16 bonus to Strength, plus 2 to Dexterity, and plus 8 to Constitution. 
And then finally, at level 10, you're going to gain a plus 20 to strength, a plus 2 to dex, and a plus 8 to constitution when you're able to assume a dire bear form. This will be at level 17 or 18. So you're going to be close to, uh, you know, not maximum level, but uh, getting close to epic level here. And a plus 20 bonus to strength is still nothing to sneeze at. That said, we're going to see why it's not quite as impressive as it seems at first glance. Um, a quick look at the things you're going to miss out on. You're going to miss out on three points of damage reduction, uh, at least. Uh, you're going to miss out on Tireless Rage, but that's rarely going to come up since your fatigue condition only lasts until the end of the encounter, and you're usually going to end the encounter before you run out of rage rounds. And if the battle is lasting longer, then it's probably, well, it's hopefully against foes that you don't need to worry about being fatigued while fighting. Hopefully you'll have wiped out all the serious foes by then. Um, but overall, you're not going to be missing out on too much, even though you are going to be losing more features than you gain through this class. The bear forms are really great. Um, they are going to give you natural armor as well, which is very helpful because you're not going to have your armor on when you shapeshift. Uh, and having your belt of strength um, may or may not function depending on how your dungeon master interprets it and whether or not they think that a magic item can, you know, shift with your form and a bear has a belt slot or not. But it doesn't really matter because this is an enhancement bonus anyway, so it's going to overlap with your belt of giant strength. So how good is the bear form? Well, obviously a plus 8 bonus to strength seems a lot better, but you are going to be limited to your natural weapons, which is going to be a bite and two claws for a d8 and d4s in the case of the black bear, for 2d6 and d8s in the case of the brown bear, and for a bit of a reversal, um, two claws is your primary attack doing 2d4 damage each, and a bite doing 2d8 is a secondary attack in your dire bear form. Now if we look at a uh, hypothetical level 17 barbarian with greater rage, uh, a plus six belt of strength. We're just going to assume that there's no magic weapon involved because this calculation is already painful enough for the bear warrior. Um, we're looking at a character who, in a vacuum, is going to have plus 27 uh, to hit for a d12 plus 15 damage. Uh, using a great axe, presumably, um, they're going to have four iterative attacks and on average against an armor class 30 target, which judging by the monster manual monster creation rules is an average armor class for a challenge rating 17 creature. Um, this barbarian is going to deal about 53.75 damage uh, per round on average. This is including potential criticals, but it's ignoring anything like, you know, a weapon focus or a magic weapon or anything like that. Now for a level 17 bear warrior, uh, it's reached level 10 and is able to assume dire bear form. He's going to have two claw attacks at plus 31 to hit. He's going to have a 39 strength as opposed to a 31. Uh, he won't be able to benefit from a belt of giant strength, but we'd assume that a normal barbarian would have a plus six belt of giant strength by level 17. That's not too much of a stretch to assume. Uh, with that 39 strength, he's going to be hitting at plus 31 for 2d4 plus 14 on two claw attacks and having a bite for plus 26 for 2d8 plus 7. Now you can quibble over the exact stats here. Uh, you can, of course, assume that he might pick up a uh, multi-attack feat at some point, which would give him a little bit better damage here, and might just edge him out ahead of the Barbarian. But as is, he's going to do 52.4 damage versus the regular Barbarian's 53.75. Now you can say that, uh, you know, amulets of natural weapon, or of uh, magic fang exist, and... All sorts of other potential enhancements exist, but this example is just to, you know, sort of provide a reference that while the Bear Warrior's uh, strength bonuses look excellent, they unfortunately fall a little bit behind in terms of their actual damage output. Now, the other upside here is that while a uh, natural weapon attack doesn't have to deal with iteratives, um, this can be a good thing because it means that you can power attack more effectively. Unfortunately, you can't power attack one for two, uh, because of those secondary attacks, you can't treat your bite like a two-handed weapon, but you're still getting three attacks at a one-for-one one, um, with almost your full bonus rather than having really only two effective attacks with power attack because those others are most likely just going to miss with any significant power attack penalty. Um, that's still really a plus, 
you know, plus four damage bonus versus a plus three damage bonus, trading one for one on three attacks. Um, so you are still a little bit worse off with these natural attacks, but it's not too bad. And in some situations, uh, especially if you do take multi-attack, you might actually pull up ahead and be better off. So is the bear warriors, bear forms, an upgrade to barbarians? We can consider it more of a side grade. Um, it would be really difficult to do the math to prove that it is better or worse in all situations. You certainly could potentially make it stronger than an average barbarian is, but it will take a lot more work. That said, against uh, foes, you know, maybe with damage reduction, um, it will still be nice to have, or against foes with high armor class, in which case you might not be wanting to power attack at all, and you might just want to land as many hits as possible. Even so, the bear warrior really isn't quite superior to a regular barbarian, but it is still a very cool uh, feature to have. You're also going to gain scent while in bear or non-bear form, and this is nice because scent can help you locate invisible foes or, you know, just enemies that are hiding from you. Also, at level 7, you're going to get one extra rage per day, which is nice. You're not going to keep your rage progression uh, at the same track as a barbarian, but you're still going to get some amount of extra rage uses per day, which is good. Uh, unfortunately, since bite isn't your solo natural attack, it's going to nerf your damage output a little bit here because you're not going to be able to use it as an iterative attack um, and you're not going to be able to fully take advantage of your extremely high strength by getting that times one and a half multiplier that a regular barbarian would get off of their uh, great axe or great sword or whatever they're using and you're also going to have to deal with the fact that you can't benefit from a belt of giant strength um, so overall i would give this prestige class five stars for concept and four stars for execution. It is really cool and it would be great to see more other prestige classes like this one for other animals. As it is, the bear warrior is a lot of fun. It's definitely not worse than a regular barbarian uh, unless you're running into enhancement bonus based damage reduction, in which case you're going to need that magic fang. Uh, you're going to really need the dungeon master to work with you in letting you keep your amulet of magic fang uh, on and working while you're in your bear form. Um, and it will, of course, be a massive gold investment, but if you can pull it off, this is a really great prestige class, and one I would definitely recommend taking uh, for a barbarian that's not really too interested in the higher level barbarian features. Frenzied Berserker, of course, is still more powerful, but this is a more interesting version of that. It's not just a sort of generic upgrade of a barbarian that just gets more angry. Uh, and, of course, you could combine the two, and that would probably produce uh, a very very powerful character. So that's going to be about it for this D&D 3.5 prestige class review. Definitely recommend the Bear Warrior if that's your thing. Uh, not a straight power upgrade like the Frenzied Berserker again, but it is a fun one that will keep you entertained with your Barbarian character well into your high levels, and certainly with more interesting features than the regular Barbarian. So that'll be about it for this review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time here on 3.5 Archive.